Hello! In this video, we're going to be using trigonometric functions by answering a homework question. The question says, find the exact value of each of the remaining trigonometric functions of theta. And they give you that si secant, sorry, secant of theta is negative 5, given that sine of theta is positive. So the first thing you want to do is make a triangle so you can find all the other six values. But to make a triangle, before you do that, you need to find out what quadrant it is in. So let me draw a little picture of our coordinate system. And let's figure out what quadrant this is in. So first of all, we know that, and let's move it up a little bit, secant of theta equals, well, negative 1, 5. I'm not going to worry about the negative 1, 5 yet. I'm going to say, where is less than 0? Because negative 5 is a negative value. Less than 0 means negative. Okay, well, the definition of secant, we know that secant of theta, by definition, is r over x. r is always positive. So this means, so, this means that x better be negative. Where is x negative? x is negative, well here's x positive, right? x is negative in either the second or the third quadrant. One, two, three, four is how we label these. Okay. What about the fact that sine of theta, let's use a different color, sine of theta, not very different, is um, greater than zero sine of theta is greater than zero. Okay, where is sine of theta greater than zero? Well, sine of theta definition is y, oh, it's y, yep, yeah, over r, y over r. r is always positive, so y better be positive also. So y is positive either in the first quadrant or the second. So the answer is going to be in the second quadrant. Uh, the secant is less than 0 in 2 and 3. The sine is greater than 0 in 1 and 2. So 2 satisfies both of these conditions. OK, so now I'm going to draw my triangle. We know the angle is in the second quadrant, I'm going to draw a line down to form my right triangle. I always go down to the x-axis. I never go to the y-axis because we want the point x comma y to represent this point. We know we go this way and then up this way. Okay, uh, in fact I always think of this, I was going to mention this in my uh, first video, I always think of a bow tie. How do I come up with a bow tie? Well, if this is in the first quadrant, we always go down to the x axis. If it's in the second quadrant, we always go down to the x axis. If, the, if it's in the third quadrant, if your angle happens to be in the third quadrant, you need to go up because you need to get to the, again, x axis, not the y. And then if it's the fourth quadrant, you also go up. So you end up with a little bow tie. So going this way, this doesn't make my bow tie, I was going down. Okay, just a thought to remember. Getting back to the problem. Okay, so now we know that to figure, find the value of our um, other trigonometric functions, we are going to use the fact that secant of theta is negative 5. Now, by the way, now we're going to use the negative 5. We know the definition of secant is r over x again. So I'm going to make this a ratio. By the way, the r can never be negative value. So I'm going to change this to this. So one possible point could be x is negative 1 and y, so no, not y, r is 5. So I'm going to write this here. Let's do it in red. Negative 1 and 5. Okay. So now I would like to find out what the y is. The first question they're asking me is sine. 
we know sine, you need y, y over x. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that x squared plus y squared better always equal r squared. x is negative 1. We don't know what y is. That's going to equal 5 squared. So rewriting this, we know 1 plus y squared equals 25. Subtract 1 from both sides and you get 24. So y, taking the square root of both sides, is plus or minus the square root of 24. But we can take away the minus because y, why can we take away the minus? Is because if we see it, it's in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, we know the y is positive. So I'm just going to erase that little minus if I can. Can I do it? One thing I need to warn you about is when you're plugging in the answers, notice how it says to simplify your answer, including any radicals. This is where trips, everybody gets trips up the most on this problem because um, they'll write the answer in terms of square root of 24, right? Sine of theta equals y over r, right? Which is square root of 24 over 5. They think that they, they should be right. They are correct, but the answer is not simplified. You learned in algebra that any time you have a perfect square, that you should take it out. And that's the answer they're expecting. So you always need to read in parentheses, right? And they do not want a decimal, by the way, because it says including any radicals. Use integers or fractions for any number in the expression. So you cannot just use square root of 24 in your calculator. But anyways, 24 is 4 times 6, and 4 is a perfect square, so this can be written as 2 square root of 6, right? Because you can use the square root property, and square root of 4 is 2. Okay. So now we have x, y, and r. So we can start finding all of our other remaining trig values, which is what the question asked for above find the exact value, so exact value does not mean decimal, of each of the remaining trig functions. Simplify your answer. So let's start with sine. The definition of sine is um, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So which opposite is y over r? Okay, what is the y? We just found it to be 2 square root of 6 over the r we know is 5, right? So we should have wrote this down here. 2 squared is 6 is what the y is. Okay, then the cosine of theta is x over r, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the so co. Um, and the x is negative 1 over right, r, which is 5. Tangent of theta is y over x, which is the y 2 square root of 6 over negative 1. Now they're probably not going to write it that way. They're going to, the answer is going to expect you to put the negative up in the numerator. So, so far, those are the answers that you need to type in. Right? You type in this and you press enter, they'll ask for cosine and you type that in and so forth. Okay, well, we need to find a couple more. The next one, let's do cosecant. Cosecant, I don't know what order they're going to ask you, is r over y. It's 1 over the sine. So we flip it, right? It's going to be 5 over 2 square root of 6. Now, a lot of people would think the answer is right again. They would be right, but the book does expect for you to rationalize the, right? The answer says simplify, so they want you to rationalize all denominators. If you don't remember how to rationalize, well, what you need to do from your intermediate algebra days is multiply top and bottom by square root of 6. So what does that become? That becomes 5 square root, oops, stopped writing. 5 square root of 6 over 2 times square root of 36, but square root of 36 is just 6. So it turns out to be 5 square root of 6 over 12. That's the answer for that one. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. 
uh, let's see, what else? Secant, well, we, didn't, we know that's negative 5, so they probably won't ask you that. So the other, only other one is cotangent. The definition of cotangent is 1 over tangent, so it's x over y, and the x is negative 1, and the y is 2 square root of 6. Again, they're going to expect you to rationalize this, so we have to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 6. So what do we get for that one? It's negative square root of 6 over 2 times square root of 36, which square root of 36 is 6. So it's negative square root of 6 over, I barely have enough room, 12. I made it. And that is the final answer they expect you to type.